Hi, my name is Al Green. Not that one, but the, uh, the struggling guy who was in the music industry for years trying to sell talent and songs to agents. The agents befriended me and taught me techniques that I want to pass on to you through my program, which is called You Can Talk, You Can Sell. Anyone who has ever taken this program has excelled in selling and either risen to the top of their company, their team, or the top of their field. It's called You Can Talk, You Can Sell, and you can get it right here. The three common mistakes that most people make, that most people don't even know about, and this goes for beginners as well as veteran salespeople. And that is very, very simple. It's very simple. The first mistake most salespeople make is they over talk. They do too much talking and they don't give the customer a chance to breathe and take it in. The idea is to get their attention in the first seven seconds and keep their attention. But you're not going to be doing that by doing all the talking unless you have something that is so incredible that, that you know they're already interested. But let's say, for example, it's a cold call or it's a first time call and you have to get to that customer's attention span and make sure that you are part of it because people are distracted by many things. They have personal lives that have issues. They have business goals that the company has issues with and they have deadlines and sometimes they're just not as focused as you think they're going to be. Plus, you don't know if the competition has been there or not. So part of your presentation is to uncover a lot of these details. First of all, to find out if they're open. But you want to limit your talking to a few open-ended introductory questions that basically lead them to do the talking. And then as they're talking, you're listening. And listening is the most important thing. They're the ones talking, but you are the one controlling the conversation. And the fact is, you're not going to be doing it by just talking. So what are you doing in that respect? Because the second thing that a lot of salespeople make, especially veterans, is they overthink it. They think that if they follow a system exactly, that the system's going to work. They follow the system too closely, and they don't realize that what they're doing is kind of coming off in, in, a, in a way like a doctor is very medical, very clinical, and very exact sounding. And not everybody can understand that. I watched a presentation of a guy that had a very, very good product. And he did so much talking about his education and how he developed a patent for it and how he could put it in so many different markets that the company that he was pitching to, who had lots of venues, lots of other places they could use this product, got caught up in what he was talking about because then he started telling him exactly how it worked. And it was not on the level of technology that the buyer could understand. Not everybody can understand the kind of information that you have that's really, really important to you. It's too technical maybe. So over talking is really a bad thing because by the time he was done, the people in the office that attended the meeting had no idea what this guy was talking about. So he said, let me have one of your technologists and they'll tell you. And basically the attitude was, well, that's kind of going to a different department. We make the decisions here. We just want to know in the basis, could you simplify this? What does it do? And is it need support or is, and then they started asking pricing questions and the questions you don't want to have, are the ones where they ask you a question that's yes or no. Because there is more to it than yes or no. That's why you don't ask them questions that answer yes or no because of the fact that they can cut you off with very short sentences. Not everybody elaborates when they say no. And not everybody elaborates when they say yes. The only time you want a yes or no is when you first, first walk in and say, hey, you got a few minutes. That's a simple yes or no. Okay? And you make sure that the time is clear. Yeah, I put time aside for you. What's going on? That could be a very simple uh, reply that you get. But in reality, the fact is, is you don't want to do all the talking. You want to make sure that your customer 
is ready for you. And when you build common ground and rapport, it's not only between you and the customer because maybe you play golf and they play golf. That's one area. But at the same time, does your company have a product that their company can use? So, for example, years ago, I sold internet to companies. And that was at a time when many companies were just ramping up with internet. Prior to that, the software they used had to be upgraded and had to be used in such a way that if you're not a trained user, you had to have training on it. And that was another added service because a lot of companies would charge for their training. They were very, very greedy in that way. And then there's other companies that say, no, we'll come out and train you for free. Today, they'll train you online. But in those days, you had to spend a lot of time. I went to one of these trainings and for an hour and a half after hours, it was like seven o'clock until 8.30, which lasted till nine o'clock. It turned out to be two hours. My head was filled with so many details about this product that I said to the salesman, who uses this? And he said, mainly CPAs. And I said, they'll understand it because is it intuitive? Can they figure it out? He goes, no, there's a system they have to follow. That's why there has to be training. And I said, well, how much does this training cost? Because if it doesn't have a good price, you're going to have a lot of problems with it. And he said, no, the price is reasonable. It's got a, a main charge for buying the software. Then there's a monthly charge for the service they have to use. But at the same time, the training usually costs about $299 and I can give it away. I said, great, but you have to convince them that they by buying this product from you are going to save money because in their mind, if they have to take a two hour training, they're losing money. So the only justification that they can provide in order to take your training is the realization that they will save money instead of making money right off the bat. Saving money is almost as good as making money, but it's not the same thing. So if you teach, a person how to use something and they can do it quickly and get right to the heart of it then that's going to save you money but at the same time can it make you money because if you're saving time in a company then yeah you're making money also this product had an added value where it was able to use that service for that company to sell to their clients so they're buying a system that they can use to sell their own services, something that they would do for their clients that most people would have to do by hand. And it was a big sale by the time it was done. So after I did the training, I was considering, do I want to work doing this? Well, I'm not a CPA and I didn't know the terms. And so I went out with the salesman and he fielded a lot of questions that were way over my head. And these were people that were comptrollers and auditors and people that had degrees in business and knew accounting numbers like you wouldn't believe. I didn't even know what some of the basic terms were at the time. So I had to take a class to learn the basic terms of bookkeeping. And I actually did go out and sell these systems. But for a while, I was in like this fresh mode of being like not completely in the know. So I had to study and it, it became a consulting business for that particular company. And I stayed with them for a couple of years until I got a better offer, which is typical for most salespeople. But what I'm saying is, is this, is that when I went in there, I didn't know enough to do all the talking anyway. So I basically said, here's the system. I want you to look at the opening page of the software when you open it up and tell me if it guides you to where you need to go. And the person was looking for it to be intuitive. And then he would ask questions. And then I would say, well, fine. If you have a question, you can go to this area. Now, this was a big deal in those days. There's a search mechanism, which didn't exist in all software back then. It does now. But, but the guy could look up various things like job costing. And over time, I learned a lot of the bookkeeping terms. And I helped people put these software systems in. And I helped them maintain them and organize the training that they needed for their people 
it was a brilliant, brilliant system, but I was not skilled enough in the field of accounting yet. I knew enough about selling to be able to sell these systems. The commissions were very, very good, but so were, so were the, the customers' reactions to the product. So of course that was worth it, but they needed a salesperson to sell it because you can't always just, you know, know everything there is to know. And people can't just buy every product off the shelf and use it. It requires some education. When you're doing something like that, remember, this is not the time to do all the talking. Remember that. That's one of the biggest mistakes that newcomers make, and sometimes veterans do too. They just do all the talking thinking that, oh, they're there to sell, so the customer's there to listen to everything they have to say. They're really going to be listening if you can engage their interest. That's where you do the search for common ground. What do you have in common with them? Get that out of the way and find out what does your product or service have in common with their company or that household. Everybody has a different way of looking at everything. And when you're dealing with people that have their mind on other problems, you have to decide if now is the good time to make that presentation. A lot of times if a person says, look, I'm, I'm working under a deadline, I got two hours to get this done, and I've already spent 10 minutes with you. You can say, listen, I will come back at another time. Why don't you get your work done? Believe me, it can wait a, a, a day or two or whatever. And see if that works for you. Now, in some cases, that doesn't work. So you have to gauge how well can you build a rapport with that customer so that they will be understanding that you're respecting their time. But there's a lot of times people won't see you a second time because your first impression didn't grab them enough to think that they want to deal with your company. So keep that in mind. It's a whole different ball game on every customer. Every customer is different and you have to learn how to improvise. Some people can improvise and some can't. When you're in sales, your life is about improvising but you improvise with guidelines. And if you follow the system too closely, any system at all, you might be coming off as clinical. Remember that.